Once in a while, everything synchronizes into a beautiful harmonic simplicity. The road, the light, my vision, and I slip into an easy rhythm. Last week, for 36 hours, it was perfect. Everywhere I looked, images seemed to find me. I was living and creating in a heavenly paradise. It was a finely tuned visual and physical balance. The Wandering Eye, if nothing else, is about pure visual discovery and finding spiritual enlightenment through that process. You would think that, given the road as an unbroken line, my stories would take on a similar kind of point A to B quality to them. I'm not a linear thinker, and for that matter, a linear storyteller. I think in visuals and images. My stories are spherical. One can enter at any point and join the experience. I want you to feel the images I share, to breathe in the moments, finding a deep connection to the past and making them your own. I'm not going to tell you concise stories about my travels, but rather share the way it feels to be on the road with me. The endless miles of unbroken highway remind me of summer trips with my family. Back then, portable entertainment was seeing if I could hold my breath between road signs, which were sometimes miles apart. I spent hours watching the landscape. As the highway climbed a hill, mysterious possibilities lurked on the other side. My mind freely floated in and out of the here and the not here as I watched the sunlight shape the land between the horizons. I was entranced by the light. I think that's when I became a photographer. I made the connection with the rhythm of the road, the passing of time, and how the sun painted the landscape. As I open up to new hidden expressions of life, finding harmony in the chaotic vibrations of day-to-day living, I invite you to share the ride with me. Feel the full extent of my journey. Uh, I'm a historic interpreter. I'm actually the interpretive coordinator. Where are we? At the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center and Fort Mandan in Washburn, North Dakota. All right, so this is uh, an air rifle, just like the one Meriwether Lewis would have had. And so down here at the stock, what you would do is you would screw it off 
and then you would use these two pieces to pump air into it. So it acted pretty much like a bicycle pump. And uh, to get it fully charged, it would take 1,500 pumps. Um, and you can imagine how long it would take to do that. But the nice thing about it is, is it was a repeat shooter, whereas all the other guns of that time, you get one shot off. So right on the side here, you can see the little um, kind of lip right there. Yeah. That's where you would open up and stick your bullets. Um, you'd get 10, 11 bullets in that uh, holder right there, and you could usually fill it up twice. So get anywhere from 20 to 22 shots off with it fully charged. So do you know how much power it had? It's, you know, I don't know. It doesn't have a lot of kickback. I know that. Um, and it doesn't make hardly any noise, as you can imagine being yeah. an air rifle. Um, so this weapon was very intimidating to the Indians that they met. Yeah. Uh, and it was meant to be impressive and, in, and not so much intimidating, but kind of showing people if if we can form an alliance, this is the kind of backing that you'd yeah. have, sort of thing.